Thank you so much, Arjun, and uh, a very good morning to uh, everyone who has taken the time out and uh, to be on this very interesting topic. It's indeed a pleasure to uh, see the whole community almost gather and come together and have this uh, interesting conversation. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for accepting our invitation and uh, joining in for this discussion. The next 15 minutes, we'll have a very interesting conversation with uh, Thomas, who uh, leads the strategy at Mashrek uh, to understand how Mashrek Bank, one of the region's oldest privately held banks, has actually embedded the UN SDGs and uh, embedded sustainability into their uh, strategy. So, uh, Thomas, if I can start with uh, you know understanding from you, it's very interesting to note that uh, sustainability uh, is kind of sitting under uh, the strategy department and. Can you elaborate a little more on how the strategy team is driving uh, sustainability into the overall plan of the organization? Sure. Uh, thank you, Arjun. Thank you, Aruna. And good morning, uh, everyone. So kind of let me take that in two parts, Aruna. The first being the, the why strategy uh, part of it. I think, you know, I will start by saying that, you know, sustainability is looked on as a key strategic initiative for Michelin. And uh, this topic would probably rank among the top three for the CEO. You know, and hence uh, why, you know, the strategy is looking at it. And let's also face it, I think it's very clear that sustainability will play a key role in the coming years. And I think embedding as a core of corporate strategy will be critical. Maybe I think also worth mentioning this entire change management. Right? So I, I think all of us know that sustainability involves uh, not only change management, it also, especially for us, it cuts across all areas of the bank. And so, you know, we kind of play a role in uh, a holistic perspective that takes care of all the stakeholders. So, and hence, we kind of play that central coordinating role also uh, for this initiative. You know, that, that's kind of why strategy. And I think, you know, maybe the, uh, how we actually embedding it within overall strategy. I think this is where I'll probably introduce uh, what we call SPIs. Uh, you, you will hear me kind of referring to SPIs quite a bit. So what are SPIs? SPIs are, you know, what we call sustainability performance indicators, or you can just think of them as KPIs for sustainability. So that is what we kind of call as SPIs. So what we have actually done in terms of embedding it is you know, these SPIs have been articulated at an overall bank level. It figures within the bank scorecard, and then, you know, like with all the scorecards, we have, it gets in cascaded down to people as appropriate. So, you know, these SPIs form part of individual bank uh, scorecards also. And needless to say, these SPIs also form a very key part of our uh, ESG strategy. Interesting. So that's, you know, so it's good to note that uh, ESG and sustainability almost figure, as you said, in the CEO's uh, agenda of the top three important items. Now, um, it's always interesting to understand the process behind coming to the SPIs, because when you have to arrive at the SPIs, I'm sure there's a lot of work that's gone in behind the screens. And this is what we most of us don't see a lot of companies to see the report and not the work that's gone behind it. So, uh, Thomas, would it be possible for you to give us a snapshot into what was the process that was followed uh, in terms of being uh, able to arrive at the SPIs? No, uh, sure enough. Look, I think I will start by saying that it was a pretty detailed, exhaustive, thorough process that we uh, followed for this formulation of ESG strategy. Right? I will kind of say almost at the beginning was this materiality assessment that we did. So, you know, in materiality assessment, we first kind of mapped out the stakeholders. Now, when we talk of stakeholders, this uh, included our customers, obviously. It included our vendors. It included our shareholders and also our employees. So kind of, you know, all of these stakeholder groups we were, were mapped, we formulated a survey that was sent out uh, to them. And even with these select, uh, you know, stakeholder groups, we did interviews also. And as a result of all of this, we then kind of uh, formulated what we call, uh, or, you know, we came up with the 11 material topics, which kind of underpinned the entire strategy uh, bit for us, you know, so, and then, you know, once this kind of materiality assessment and these 11 material topics were identified, we moved on to the kind of good old strategy uh, process in which, you know, for these material topics, we kind of assist our baseline, you know, where do we stand? You know, once we had that, then it kind of was looking at the future aspects uh, for it, right? You know, so understand current state, 
see what a future state uh, needs to be in terms of, and then looking at what are our objectives uh, to get to that future state. And then, you know, once current state and future state is defined, what are the gaps? You know, how do we kind of bridge the gap to kind of move from current state to uh, future state? And then, you know, what, then how do you bridge those gaps? So what are the action plans that you need? And, uh, you know, so I'm again kind of going back to the SPIs. So once these, you know, uh, I mentioned 11 material topics, what we did is, you know, as part of this bridging the gap for these 11 material topics, we articulated all three SPIs per material topic, you know, so that these kind of are the more, I would say, tangible milestones, you know, th this is what we kind of need to hit to achieve our future state objectives. So, you know, that was the kind of, I would say, uh, overall process that we uh, followed. And then I think um, last point, I worth mentioning again that, you know, it is kind of not a one-time assessment, but we've realized that this kind of needs to be a living, breathing strategy that we need to continue to nurture and grow. So it's not a one and done uh, kind of exercise. Uh, so Thomas, would this mean that the SBIs uh, are not restricted to one department, but kind of touch every aspect of the bank's operations? A hundred percent, you know, it, it cuts across like, uh, you know, you know, since we have to uh, SDGs, the SDGs interestingly also formed a framework, you know, when we were formulating these SPS. And yes, it did cut across, right? So uh, let's say uh, just talking of a few examples, uh, diversity, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the SDG of uh, gender equality, diversity became a very key uh, SPI for us. So, you know, kind of from a human resource angle, that was an uh, initiative where we specified targets for the women percentage, you know, and not really in the bank across levels, you know, kind of defined targets across junior, middle, senior, and so on. And then kind of moving into the other SDG, the climate action, you know, we realized this is something that, uh, again, it's uh, across areas of the bank. So from a risk management, there's a climate risk angle that comes in from a kind of lending or a financing side, we kind of need to look at the reducing the, the finance emissions. So it, it definitely does cut across, and these SPIs have been articulated. So from what I understand from Thomas, the SPIs are closely linked to the SDGs and the SDGs form the framework. And that almost leads us to the core of the discussion today in terms of, uh, you know, how the SDGs were actually integrated. You did give us a few examples, but I think it's always interesting to understand uh, how, what were the hurdles and how that was overcome, because I think that will be of value to some of the participants and uh, to understand while in this process, there must have been some challenges, some hurdles. Uh, how did you actually navigate those and really come to the uh, level where you could identify the meaningful SDGs where the bank can, uh, you know, make a relevant contribution? Uh, sure. Uh, look, I think when we did this exercise, we realized how good the SDGs, uh, SDGs are by kind of providing a common framework, right? You know, because others we really would have been casting around picking up stuff from left, right. But, you know, these SDGs kind of gave us this unifying framework, and, uh, which we, you know, really leveraged to a very large extent. And uh, I think maybe here I should talk of, you know, I think you asked, what is the approach that we, uh, you know, adopted for incorporating this? When, when we were kind of doing this, we realized there are probably two ways you can do this, right? The first being a sort of incremental approach in which you look at the kind of existing business activities, uh, you know, which you already realize are doing elements along this. Okay, And then or the second approach being, I would say, more of a transformational approach in which, you know, you kind of revisit the full business philosophy and develop higher order goals. We actually took, I would say, the more pragmatic first approach. As I, as I mentioned, we realized that we are already covering some of these required activities and did not think there's any merit in really reinventing the wheel. What we did is, you know, so these existing activities were mapped since they were already kind of in line. And, you know, if necessary, new activities were bolted on to existing strategies so that contributions to achieving SDGs run in parallel to the actual core business strategy. So I think that is the, the main important point. You know, it was an incremental approach for us and not really uh, the transformative one because we felt that was easier to, to kind of uh, roll out and implement. Mm -hmm. So I think you made a very valid point that the SDGs actually are uh, quite detailed and in-depth in terms of a framework, because while we see the 17, um, there are a whole set of KPIs which are behind each of the SDGs, and it's a very detailed list, and uh, I think a lot of companies have seen merit in spending time and understanding the SDGs, going into the KPIs and seeing how it links back because then it's much easier to draw the connection. 
And uh, it's a very other valid point you made that a lot of organizations are already doing work on the side. And, uh, you know, you can bolt on what is already happening instead of taking a transformative approach. I think that's of, uh, you know, a lot of value in terms of practically how we went, uh, you know, Mashrik went through it. Now, I think the other point I'd really like to understand from your perspective is Mashrik is a DFM listed entity. So there are obviously ESGs now becoming a compliance requirement for a lot of listed companies. And I do know we have the, the discussion today is kind of inclined towards these larger corporations who are listed and it, the complexity kind of increases. But it's uh, you know interesting to understand from your perspective on beyond the compliance requirements, what are the key benefits that the business is witnessing? Because I'm sure as the strategy department, you would be having an oversight on uh, how the business is actually benefiting by embedding these ESGs and they are not just a compliance requirement in that sense and that, that there is a business value added to it. So can we hear a bit yeah. on that from your yeah, uh, 100% Aruna. So we, we are actually kind of from a beyond compliance, right? Because we've realized that it, this ESG accessibility topic is critical and, and you know we have a long-term view on it. We are really working hard to embed it in the DNA of Meshrik. Okay, and, and we are also, so look, I would also say there's definitely a range of benefits that we are uh, seeing out of this, right? Because we are seeing ESG as an essential way for us to remain competitive and sustainable in the long term. And, and I can give you a few simple examples. You know, I already mentioned uh, so, you know how some of the SDGs, this gender equality, but a very simple thing like SDG three, right? Good, good health and well-being. You know, as part of our employee engagement initiatives, you know, this does uh, underpin a lot of the activities that they do. And I think it goes without saying, you know, a, a healthy workforce does have its own uh, benefits, right? And then, you know, going on to other efficiency-related uh, measures, right? I think by virtue of the fact that we've uh, undertaken a lot of uh, initiatives to reduce our uh, carbon footprint and GHG emissions. These are also helping us with some efficiencies and cost savings. And look, and I will again say, being a bank, let me not forget the field. There is a business opportunity. So we're kind of trying to take the lead even in sustainable products, green products, doing sustainable advisory. So all of this, I think, you know, we are trying to front run this and we are seeing benefits from that business angle. So I would say kind of both an internal benefit as well as an external benefit. So yes, I mean, it is not just, it's definitely beyond compliance. We are seeing a host of benefits uh, from us taking up this mandate. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas. And I think it was very insightful to understand the whole journey because uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we only look at the result, but it's really good to understand the uh, diligent journey that uh, Mashrek went through in terms of ensuring that uh, you involve all the stakeholders, the material topics are identified, and the SPIs are kind of connected to the SDG. So there's a lot of work that's gone uh, behind it. And I think uh, as a wrapping up note, I'd like to also highlight the one important point that you made that it's not uh, you know, a fillet, shut it, forget it. It is a breathing, living process. You have to constantly uh, validate the assumptions, validate if what was material two years back is still material now. So uh, in conclusion, um, I think I'd say that the SDGs do provide a very strong uh, framework and we've heard that from you from a very practical standpoint that how the bank has been able to leverage it. So uh, is there anything else, uh, Thomas, that you would like to uh, you know, share with the audience in terms of uh, uh, a wrap-up uh, message? Yeah, look, uh, maybe as one last uh, point, if, you know, it's not all easy, right? I think maybe one point worth mentioning is this challenge that we face around data. You know, in some of these uh, times, you know, when we're doing it for the first time, getting a handle on this data does prove to be a challenge. So I think that is just as a practitioner, uh, a challenge that all of us need to be aware of that, Sometimes it's not easy, but I think you know, all of these baby steps are important. It's to start the process and then, you know, hopefully things start falling into place. I think maybe I'll leave that probably as the concluding thought. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas. It was a pleasure having this conversation with you. Uh, Arjun, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.